This is 125 years of Carnegie Library history in 125 seconds. <clears throat> red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Come on, come on. 1848, Andrew Carnegie arrives in Pittsburgh as a 13-year-old boy. 1853, he requests access to a private library on the north side. He makes a fortune. 1881, Carnegie offers the city $250,000 to build a public library. The city rejects the offer. Nine years later, 1890, he makes an offer of $1 million to build a palace for the library, museums, and concert halls. The city accepts and agrees to annual funding of the library with taxpayer money. April 1895, Edward Anderson becomes the first librarian of Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. November 1895, construction is completed. 1898, the first library children's department is organized and implemented. June 1900, the Mount Washington branch opens. August 1900, the Hazelwood branch opens. 1907, service to the blind begins with a small collection of embossed books. 1909, the Southside branch opens, serving a neighborhood where more of half of the residents were born outside of the U.S. 1910, the Homewood branch opens. 1918, the library shuts down for two weeks due to the influenza epidemic. 1928, the Knoxville Care branch opens inside the Rochelle School, and Ralph Munn takes over as library director. 1952, the Bookmobile lends 83,075 books in its first year of service. 1989, the library introduces Caroline, its first computerized catalog system. In 2002, e-books become available. 2005, Dr. Barbara K. Mystic becomes the first woman director at CLP. 2008, the Hill District branch opens. 2009, library officials announced the planned closure of a few branches due to budget issues, but the branches are saved by some, quote, legalized table games money and a 2011 tax initiative. 2012, Mary Frances Cooper is named the 11th director of CLP. 2016, CLP becomes a partner in the historic Pittsburgh digitized primary resources collection. <sighs> and here we are in December 2020 with the library closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There were supposed to be a bunch of big parties to celebrate the 125th anniversary. Obviously, that can't happen. But that doesn't mean we can't celebrate in other ways, like making videos about the library or hiring local visual artists to redesign the library card. Yeah, when I thought about the theme that is free to the people, immediately my mind went to my experience reading especially when I was younger. I always felt like reading is a form of liberation. And so my mind actually went to free the people. Literacy in general can be a form of freedom. That was where my mind went. And then I started thinking about, I have a, a little black girl who's like a common character I use like throughout my pieces and I was like, I have to use her. Uh, she's holding some books in her hand and they actually say celebrating 125 years on the spine. And then um, it says free to the people, but she's actually giving it an upgrade, modifying it to say free the people. So that was like the small pieces that kind of got put together and how I formulated my idea. It's fun is free, love is free, and I feel, um that's what I wanted to portray with the library cards. Even the mock-up I showed her, the library card it looks fun. <laughs> like It looks like something you want to have, you want to pick up, you want to use. I always try to portray and express positivity and you know spreading love and it's free to give somebody a hug. It's free to be positive and I feel that this project or this series kind of exudes that. You know it's it's messy, it's wild, it's creative, all the things, in my opinion, that embodies love. Love is free. When I came into this project, I thought I was making a video about books. I had no idea just how much the library has served Pittsburgh in the last 125 years. That service is deserving of celebration, and we will continue to celebrate in whatever way we can in the coming year. If you're watching this from the future, please give your friends and family a hug and remember there was a time when you couldn't do that. As much as we want to fast forward right now, I think it's well worth taking a look around and realizing just how special this organization is, how much it is helping people in an immensely stressful time, and just how lucky we are to be living in a city with such a loving library. <laughs>